comes out of a place of a similar sentiment of feeling powerless or feeling like I don't even I don't know what injustice even is or like I'm in I'm in UW Madison and kind of just like this frustration of um, just not knowing. When we talk about justice, my mind becomes a plastic bag rustling in the wind of the parking lot of the grocery store. It's full of nothing but useless junk like receipts or 20% off coupons or dictionary definitions in the stuff I see when I turn the news on. Another defenseless kid shot, another cop gone wrong. The front page news brainwashes my disengaged views, their jumbled jargon mixed up with no goals or set purpose. The illusory notion that inattention is more fun, and ignorance is a concrete state never to be freed from. A boy boxed in a man's mind, but mind you, I'm in a bind here, because I'm being sold sugar-coated truth. Tainting my soul should be the least of your fears when my fellow human beings' lives are not being revered. Humanity is something to be celebrated, right? Made in the image of God, branded with divine craftsmanship? Isn't that the truth? What is the truth? CNN, NBC, Fox News? Godlike effigies reduced to the state of total insignificance. Whose truth is more true? Really, it's a bottomless pit. One moment, injustice flashes across the screen, but it turns out it's just those oblivious conservatives again. Not a moment to waste. Did you see the terror on TV tonight? War, pestilence, slavery? But they tell me it's just political rhetoric spewed from the mouths of those loose liberals again. Newsflash, slavery still exists and racism is alive and well. Liberal, conservative, up, down, left, right. What's the point anymore if we're all just going to fight? What really is inequity, oppression, wrongdoing, or unfairness if these people get to define it? Does not violence against compassion and freedom transcend our need to be right? My mind's a plastic bag, stuffed to the brim with empty rhetoric, abandoned in ceaseless flight, in the dead of the night. The supply is low, while demand skyrockets. So we keep climbing after our own dreams, the schemes that blind the screams for help. We need a voice to ignite our heart's spark. The voice that causes our demons to dart, that boils our blood, that pushes souls and flesh apart, that drives our minds to consider sacrifice. Because when I stare at my feeble hands, I ponder how I could ever make a difference. But a glimmer of hope shines from the smug, machine-driven rhetoric of these screen jockeys. I find it in the mysteries of the written histories of humanity. It is revealed that evil never really triumphs over good for an eternity. For as often as these calamities have existed, so have forces which demand its extinction. Faith, hope, beauty, patience, joy. Forces with which evil cannot reckon itself. Compassion bundled up in muscles and love called the human heart. For deep within ourselves, there's a drive to find it somewhere within our souls to help. Some recognize they are not their own. The tides flow, the flowers grow, and birds somehow know to fly south when it gets cold. There are powers beyond the exertion of our control that we cannot command. But how could I break steel chains? The iron gates binding their bodies and their minds. The malevolent conditioning that washes their brains of any individuality. Can I really be the savior of the world? No. I'm no superhero. Those are just manifestations of my own feelings of insignificance and weakness. It's bleak to think I could end its reign. The rain still falls, the fall still calls, but the call is always the same. Pause and ask yourself, who is the real savior of the world? Jesus Christ, the true God incarnate, sent to proclaim liberty to the captives and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. True justice manifest that we may partake in his mission of social and eternal salvation.